Hi and welcome to this video which is part of the Leaving Cert Higher Level Inferential Statistics Revision. Um, so this video is specifically going to look at working with margin of error. So margin of error um, and 95% confidence are both parts of the Leaving Cert Higher Level course underneath the Inferential Statistics section. So the, there is a video which covers the complete inferential statistics course um, and that has been linked in the description below if you want to work through the whole section. So now let's talk about samples. So when we want to gather information, it's not always possible to work with the full population. And the full population is the group that we want to know the information about. The reason we can't is because it's often very time consuming and in turn quite expensive. So the alternative is using a sample to work with that represents the population. So you would have already done a lot of work regarding the samples, types of samples and how they work. Remember that as part of the Leaving Cert exam, you could be asked about those samples samples and asked to describe samples so it's important that you know them in detail now and um, that is not covered here in this video we're sticking straight to the inferential statistics element of the statistics course but you will have lots of fantastic notes on this in your textbook in any revision books and um, on the internet there are loads of great notes so just make sure you're happy with those so what we're going to do in this video is look at the practicality of using a sample. So we're not going to talk about how the sample was created or anything like that. Instead, we're going to talk about, well, what happens when I use the sample instead of the population? So what I would ask is, in terms of data, do you think that the sample will be as accurate as working with the full population? And hopefully your answer is no. And the reason is, you have a small number of people who are trying to represent population. So that might happen, but it might not. So we would never think of the sample as being as accurate as the full population, but it's a trade-off. We end up with something that's less accurate, but it means that it is a lot easier to compile and it's not as expensive. So now we're going to talk about margin of error. So when we use the sample, which is only a representation of the full population, we will have less accurate information than if we use the full population. So hopefully we can all agree on that. And another thing to note is the bigger the sample, the more accurate the information becomes. It's like an experiment in probability. The more times we do the experiment, the more accurate it becomes. So how accurate we are depends on the size of our sample. We will get an answer, give or take a slight error. So some of the things that I talk about with regards margin of error is, in English, we talk about give or take or in or around. And it means we get a number, maybe a time, for example, so in or around 10 a.m. That doesn't mean you're gonna expect that person exactly at 10. It might be a little bit before, it might be a little bit after, or give or take. So somebody might ask you, how much did that you pay for that top? And you might say, oh, uh, give or take 20 euro, or in or around 20 euro. So we use it often if we're not 100% sure. And that's what we're gonna look at here. So the margin of error is that give or take. So when we take any information from the sample, it's going to be kind of accurate, give or take some. Um, and that give or take is linked to the margin of error. So the margin of error can tell us how valid or how much of an error there will be because we're using the sample. And the formula is given as E, the margin of error, is equal to one over the square root of N, where N is the sample size. And the only thing I would say about this formula is it's important to note that it's not in your log table. So it is something that needs to be learned off by heart. And they have asked it, and we will see how they've asked it in questions. Um, a lot of the questions we're gonna deal with will be past papers, um, sample papers, and mocks. So let's take our first example. Uh, we're gonna look at um, a margin of error question, and there's two parts. So what sample size will be required to have a margin of error of 0 0.05? So we're gonna start with our formula. So E equals one over square root of N. I'm looking for the square root of N. So I put 0 0.05 is equal to one over the square root of N. So two ways you can do this, a nice little easy way is put the, both as a fraction, and you can actually use the reciprocal of both sides. So that means flip the fractions. So you get one over 0 0.05, and that is root n 
equals to 20. Therefore, n squaring both sides is 400. So if we want to have a margin of error around of 5%, we'd need to ask 400 people. So the second part of this question is, what sample size would be required to have a margin of error of 2.5? So that is 0 0.025. We must always use decimals when we're working with this particular formula. So all I would ask at this point before we work it through is to take a look at the number we had in the previous part, which was 0 0.05, and the number we have here, which is 2.5. So effectively, I have halved my margin of error. So because there's um, some kind of inverse relationship, so what I mean by that is as the number of people in my sample increases, the margin of error decreases. Do you think because we halved the margin of error that the sample size will be double? So just have a think about that for a second and we're going to work through and you'll see if you're right or if you're wrong. So again, E is equal to 1 over root N. I have 0 0.025 equals 1 over root N. Using the reciprocals again, I get root N is equal to 1 over 0 0.025. That gives me root N is equal to 40. And N is actually, when we square it, equal to 1600. Okay, so if you said, yeah, the... The margin of error is half, therefore the number of my sample would just double. You're actually incorrect. If you said no, well done. And the reason it doesn't just double is because we're working with the root n. So it isn't just a direct, well, it's not just an inverse or a linear inverse proportion here. So it's not as one goes up, the other goes down. It is a bit more complex than that because of that square root. So just bear that in mind before you make any silly errors on looking going oh well the margin of errors have so i'll just double my sample it's always best to show your work and don't make assumptions like that so let's take another margin of error question so a statistician wishes to estimate with 95 percent confidence the proportion of students who live within a certain distance of a school she wishes to be accurate within 10 percentage points now this is important within 10 percentage points. What is the minimum sample size necessary for the statistician to carry out the analysis? So we are dealing again with E is equal to 1 over root N. However, this time what we're saying is 1 over root N must be within 10 percentage points. That must mean that it's less than or equal to. So that's within and 10 percentage point means 10%. So what I mean by that, um, in terms of my decimal, is less than or equal to 0 0.1. Now, be so careful here with your inequality. Um, if you're happy working with inequalities, great, stick with them. Um, if not, you can substitute in an equals and then try to figure out the answer at the end. But hopefully um, nothing will go wrong in that case. So just my advice would be try to stick to the inequality. There's nothing terribly complicated going to happen because where the complication with inequalities happen is where we're multiplying or dividing by a negative. So root n is definitely positive because we're going to have to take the positive square root of a positive number. So if I multiply both sides by root n, I get 1 is less than or equal to 0 0.1 root n. No issue. Divide both sides by 0 0.1. So I get 1 over 0 0.1 is less than or equal to root n. So cleaning that up, I get 10 is less than or equal to root n. Um, I'm just going to flip it for ease because I like to have my letter on the left hand side. So it's greater than or equal to 10. And I'm going to square both sides. So I get n is greater than or equal to 100. Now, they asked what was the minimum sample size. So n can be equal to 100 or any number bigger. Therefore, the minimum sample size will be 100. So a lot of reading of that question for actually just a margin of error question. So try to pick out the important pieces of information and not let any of the other parts bog you down. 
So let's talk about 95% confidence for a second. So for the Leaving Cert exam, we're just, we're just going to focus on 95% confidence. All questions relating to samples will include that we are dealing with 95% confidence to make them mathematically correct. However, we will never have to deal with any other confidences. Okay, so don't panic. A lot of students will often ask, but what happens if it says 99? And the answer is it won't. Okay, as you want to study statistics um, in more detail, you'll see other things appear, but for the moment we're sticking to 95% confidence. Now, these are not the mathematical definitions of 95% confidence. This is just a way to help you to grasp what's going on. So, when we talk about 95% confidence, this can be very roughly translated as a 95% chance my information is correct. So 95% chance I'm correct. We then will see 5% significance. So this is just another way to say 95% confidence and roughly translated, it means a 5% chance that my information is incorrect. Okay, so think of it this way. If there's a 95% chance I'm right, there's a 5% chance I'm wrong. And that's basically what the 95% confidence and the 5% significance are saying. One is saying just the same thing as the other, just in a different way. The margin of error that we looked at only works for 95% confidence. And dealing with 95%, we use a Z score of 1.96, which we would talk about as rounding to two, with regards to the empirical rule, but we are a lot more accurate now. We're actually going to 1.96.